Bro, it's gonna be awesome. What's yeah. your backstory? Here are 10 foods originally intended for very different purposes, because there's always a backstory to our most famous food products. 7-Up. I can't believe it's gone, Jakey. The pizza oven, the 7-Up fridge. This popular soda has an interesting origin story. For one thing, it was initially called Bib Label Lithiated Lemon Lime Soda. That's because one of its ingredients was actually lithium. This drug is used to help people who live with bipolar disorder. Until 1950, the fizzy drink continued to contain lithium, and there are those who believe that the number 7 in the soda's name is a reference to the atomic mass of lithium. The up portion of the product name could refer to the mood elevation that may have occurred after someone drank the beverage. These days, there is no lithium in 7-Up. As society moves forward, certain ingredients that were once commonplace in the old days would never be added to food products now. And that includes lithium. But in Victorian times, it was quite common for respectable people to use illicit substances that are banned today. I don't use that one. This classic lemon-lime soda pop hit the market just a couple of weeks before the devastating stock market crash in 1929. The product was invented the same year by a man named Charles Liper Grigg. He started out by making an orange-flavored fizzy drink called Howdy. Later, he came up with 7-Up, and it's still a popular beverage today, minus the pharmaceutical. Nashville Hot Chicken I like spicy chicken. No, 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 you said George likes spicy chicken. Nashville hot chicken is chicken with plenty of spicy kick. It's beloved by spicy food fans, but some people think it has way too much heat. However, its possibly punishing spice level is actually the reason why it came into being in the first place. During the 1930s, a man named Thornton Price was unfaithful to his partner. She found out and got extremely upset, but devised an interesting punishment for her wayward boyfriend. She whipped up a morning meal consisting of chicken that was positively loaded with incredibly hot pepper. However, her revenge didn't quite hit the target because her cheating partner loved what she served up. I love it. Spicy foods like Nashville hot chicken aren't for everyone, but there is a segment of the population that actively seeks out the spiciest foods imaginable. There are even eating contests where participants test their mettle by seeing who can consume the most brutally spicy items, including recipes that feature ultra-hot ghost peppers. While Nashville hot chicken certainly isn't the spiciest dish around, it does have a real kick. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Salt. Imagine scrambled eggs without salt. Cookies without salt. While it's been used to add flavor to food forever, it was initially also commonly utilized to preserve food. Salt is a classic preservative that societies have relied on for centuries. As you can see, salt is a multi-purpose product that is definitely good for more than making crunchy potato chips totally addictive. However, it definitely adds a lot of excitement to ruffles, lays, and kettle chips, not to mention Tostitos, Doritos, and a million other other crunchy snacks. Other salty foods include manzanilla olives packaged in jars, margaritas with sea salt on the rim of the glasses, and pizza, especially with anchovies. Since it's an abrasive, salt can also be used to clean items. It also helps to brighten faded colors and soothe scratchy throats. Seven cups of salt? Even I know this isn't a recipe. One other interesting fact about salt is that it can be used to easily remove the shells from nuts. When shelled nuts are soaked in warm water and salt for a while, enzymes are released that actually make the tasty treats, such as peanuts, easier to digest. Tea bags. Green tea mixed with lemon zinger. Two tea bags in one cup. People are still arguing about when tea bags were initially invented. While Mary Malarin and Roberta Lawson got the first patent for tea bags, some historians think that the initial tea bag prototype was created by accident roughly 10 years before the patent was granted. A man named Thomas Sullivan wanted to send tea samples to clients to boost his profits, but he wasn't quite sure how to do it efficiently. So he started sending out said samples in tiny pouches made from silk. The pouches made the tea more portable. Once people got 
bought the pouches from Thomas, they could enjoy making loose leaf tea at their homes by using tea steepers and teapots. However, some clients began using the pouches in an unintended manner. They dunked the silk pouches right in the hot water, thereby possibly being the first people to use tea bag esque products. I thought she was just making homemade tea bags again. About a decade later, Roberta and Mary decided to create proper tea bags so they get most of the credit for creating this food product. After they invented the tea bag, perhaps with the help of Thomas Sullivan, who created something similar for a different intended purpose, the entire tea industry changed. Today, companies like Celestial Seasonings and Lipton offer tea bags to consumers, and they provide a host of tea options in the little packets. Whether people want decaf, black tea, green tea, chamomile tea to help them sleep at night, or almost any other variety, they can find it in tea bags that make tea preparation a total breeze. Coca Cola. Do you really want to live in a world without Coca Cola? This famous dark and syrupy soda was the brainchild of Dr. John Pemberton, who invented the sweet concoction back in 1886 after sustaining severe injuries during the Battle of Columbus. After he invented it, he developed a morphine addiction, using the drug to kill his pain. Since he was a pharmacist, he decided to combine another powerful drug with soda, and the result was a product that was originally called Pemberton's French Wine Coca. It contained booze, as well as coca leaf extract, which is utilized in the production of cocaine. Later on, a drug-free coca leaf extract was used instead to get around laws which criminalized cocaine. Good. Look at the ingredients. Cocaine, alcohol, morphine, mercury with chalk. The soda with the full-strength coca leaf extract was marketed as something to soothe the nerves and ease tiredness. The cocaine wasn't removed from the Coca-Cola recipe until 1903. Today, those who drink the soda need only rely on its caffeine and sugar for a little boost. Brandy. I'll have a Brandy Alexander. Brandy is created using the same process whereby other forms of alcohol are made. This means that a natural product is fermented so its natural alcoholic components emerge. With vodka, the natural product is often potatoes. With wine, it's grapes. With beer, it's barley. With brandy, fruit is the natural ingredient and the liquor is produced by distilling fruit wine. Back in the olden days, hundreds of years ago, merchants that transported goods by sea chose to remove the extra water from the wine that was carried on board their ships to save on weight. When they did so, they initiated the second distillation process that produces brandy. Something new is born. This made the alcohol in the beverages stronger. Merchants planned to re-add water after arriving at ports. It tastes like whiskey with an extra touch of sweetness from the fruit. Naturally, some people preferred the stronger brandy to the diluted fruit wine, and a new and popular form of spirit was born. Sushi. Ooh, sushi. Mm. Most people want fresh sushi and stay miles away from the prepackaged stuff that they find in convenience stores and grocery stores. However, sushi used to be made in ancient China as a means of keeping fish preserved by wrapping it in rice that had been fermented. Over time, vinegar rice replaced the fermented version. This change led to the sushi that most of us are familiar with today. While sushi is commonly linked with Japan and is served at a host of Japanese restaurants in Japan, North America, and beyond, its origins are Chinese. Hey, look, made in China, kind of like our family. The fermented rice originally used to preserve fish in China was salty, and this salt content also helped preserve the fish. Today, we gobble up sushi that's often freshly prepared by skilled sushi chefs, but things used to be so much different. Necessity is the mother of invention, and necessity drove people in ancient China toward wrapping fish in rice that would help to keep it fresh for longer. Raisins. I love raisins, and he 
hates raisins. Raisins are dried grapes, and they were found on vines as far back as 2000 BCE. They were discovered in Europe's Mediterranean region. Initially, the dried grapes were utilized mainly as decoration. However, later on, they were awarded as prizes after sporting competitions. People also traded them and used them to make medicines. Today, sweet and chewy raisins are consumed as snacks. They may also be added to baked goods, from cookies to muffins to breads and beyond. While raisins have their detractors, a lot of raisin haters don't know the history of the little dried fruit. They have no idea that people used to decorate with the shriveled grapes. You know I hate raisins! Those of a certain age may recall a memorable ad campaign for California raisins, which featured large, dancing, claymation raisins. This ad campaign was an attempt to shine a light on the good things about raisins, and the marketing gambit definitely hit the target with consumers. This chewy fruit is definitely nutritious. While they aren't a low-carb snack, they do contain vitamins, antioxidants, and probiotics. Gin and tonic. It's jum and tonic. Gin, rum, and tonic. This adult beverage is a total classic. It's a light tasting with a bit of kick from the gin, and it's been around for ages. During the 19th century, this cocktail was actually used as more than just a form of liquid enjoyment. British colonialists drank it to try to stave off malaria. Tonic contains a medicinal extract, quinine, which can stop malaria symptoms, including chills and fever. Gin made the quinine go down easier, and the touch of lime served the same purpose while also helping to prevent scurvy. Tonic water has up to 83 milligrams of quinine per liter. This is a lot lower than the typical therapeutic dose of quinine via tablets. That is not healthy. While drinking tonic water won't hurt you, typical tonic water consumption in the modern age may not be enough to give you a lot of health benefits. Officers of the East India Company's Presidency Army are credited with creating the iconic cocktail. Today, gin is having a bit of a moment, as actor Ryan Reynolds is known for promoting a gin brand known as Aviation Gin. Top Gear alum James May also produces Asian parsnip gin that his fans can purchase online. If you haven't really experimented with gin, why not create a gin and tonic today? Just mix two ounces of gin with four to six ounces of tonic water. Add a wedge of lime or slices of lime as a garnish. It's that simple to enjoy a classic G&T anytime. Baking soda. Oh, you don't mind baking soda flavor? Oh, baking soda, annoying little product. Baking soda is good for more than getting dough to rise. It's also got a long reputation as a household cleanser. In fact, these days, a lot of household cleaning products contain this effective ingredient. However, the versatility of baking soda does not stop with leavening and cleaning power. This food item is also used to reduce itching, clean teeth, remove odors, and exfoliate skin. Some people use it to soothe an acidic stomach, while others rely on it as an affordable insect repellent. It can even take the tarnish off of silver items. Oh, yeah, it's useful. Plain baking soda is affordable and easy to access, and people can use it to make their own natural cleaning products. They don't need to buy it in commercial forms that contain other ingredients. They can also use it as a personal care product or natural medicine. Baking soda is fantastically versatile, cheap, and practical. It's no surprise that people keep buying the stuff decade after decade. In terms of its value when baking, it's an effective leavening agent because it's 100% bicarbonate of soda. We've got more. Just tap or click for another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell. And hey, leave us a comment.